Well, earnings season is here and it starts with a bang. Let's get to it. Tesla's earnings are out and between robo-taxis, robots, and AI chips, we have a lot to cover. Hey everybody, welcome back. Tonight's gonna be a little different. We're gonna get into the main show a little bit in a moment here and go over everything, but we need to kind of cover what's going on with Tesla. This is very different call and it's being received very differently. It's what we refer to as a change in trend and I wanna go over it for everybody so that you're prepped for tomorrow. First and foremost, 246, you can see right where we closed, we're right around that 226, 28, we're gonna go over the earnings and everything in a second and what the heck's going wrong. Interestingly enough, that is the low end of a DTL line, a downward trend line. This downward trend line has been in existence for years. Watch what happens when I go and come all the way up. This is a multi-year downward trend line and you're sitting right on it. Now watch what happens when I zoom in on that on a one minute chart. Isn't that crazy how that works? You're holding that level. Now, I'm going to show you this as well, because after hours, we're actually still trading this in the community, even at the time of filming this. So disclosure, I do have a short position on. I'm watching down here where you have some love. So you're at what we would call a convergence point, roughly where you have more than one area of interest, where you have the lower DTL and you have your trend line right here. And we're holding for now. The issue, I'm just going to be very blunt, technically speaking, you break this, there's a little bit right here. And then there's really nothing to the top of here, which is roughly 12, 13. Uh, if you don't think you can get there, we're gonna go through the earnings right now and what happened. If you're a Tesla bull, you're more than welcome to comment below, uh, but there's, there's a lot here that we really need to go over. And if you're a bear, you're welcome to comment below. Comment below, let me know what you think. So as we like to say, the, the carrot and the stick, and no one's really falling for it anymore. No one wants to hear about robo-taxis, and we're going to get to that in a moment. We're going to jump around a little bit, but you're going to see where we wind up. So we're just going to start with the basics. And the basics are Tesla missed earnings, period. Sales were better, but they missed earnings. Bottom line, it's not debatable, it's objective. Now, some of this will be subjective, obviously, and we can talk about that and the possibility of the, the robo-taxis, their AI chips, and everything else under the sun, but let's just get to it. And our vehicle growth rate may be notably lower than the growth rate achieved in 2023. This came out at 405. At 407, I just started shorting. It was really that simple. I, I just want to be very upfront about this. You can see it right here, Tesla lowering volume. Here's 409, then starts making new lows, and we just start walking our way through it. We should talk about Google, Texas Instruments, and ENPH as well. It wasn't all nasty, but let's stick with Tesla because this is really important because there is a major shift here. But when I say I do something, I like to show it so people can actually say it. Anyway, so what we're seeing here is once you see notably lower, nobody wants to see that. No one wants a growth company trading at X times earnings to see that your growth is slowing. Nobody. He starts talking about the semi truck. Here's the issue that he's running into. No one cares anymore. No one is really believing what he's saying. Our purpose-built robo-taxi product will continue to pursue a revolutionary, unbaxed manufacturing strategy. Okay, so we went from the Cybertruck to robo-taxis, but it gets even better as this call goes on. The company says we remain committed to cost reductions on future vehicles and manufacturing efforts. The cost reductions, their gross margins are down. So your, your earnings are down and your gross margins are down. We are managing our product portfolio with a long-term orientation, focusing on growing sales and maximizing installed base and generating sufficient cash flow to invest for future growth. Okay, anyone that's talking about investing to get sufficient cash flow, this is a red flag to anyone that does any kind of level of fundamental analysis, sufficient cash flow. When was cash flow ever a problem for them? Okay, that was never really the driver, was it? This is language that when you start understanding how to read these calls, you start paying attention to. And what they did here really was a data dump. So as soon as they came out with the miss, right behind it, they dumped those other statements about vehicles being lower. And they're trying to get it all out and hope that you don't see it. Now, when you go and look at the stock, which is really trying to hold here after hours, and you can always comment on this, but I think getting very specific about this, since I think it's a change in trend, you might want to see this. So when you have these changes, you can see it right in here. And people really didn't know what to do as they're reading this. And that's why I put out their lower volumes. People in the community know where my head is when I say things like that. And you can just see the little move right down here. And that was it. Once you broke here and you start filling in those wicks, as we know, wicks are price rejection. It was pretty much on. You have the, the break, the retest. Another telltale sign is these stocks usually rally into earnings calls. All of them usually rally into earnings call. Take a look at Google, which we'll get to in a moment here. This did not rally into the call. Always put an anchor VWAP at the end of the day. It's going to be a lot in this video, guys. Always put a VWAP at the end of the day on that, the after hours move. And you can see where all the participants are after hours. This gave you a couple of really clean buy signals. 
well, short signals, I should say. Now, for lack of a better term, this is where it gets weird. And for time purposes, I'm just going to show you some of the clips that did a really good job of some of these points instead of me just going out there and then clipping it, they actually concise the point. This guy at Twitter, I have no idea who he is, Invest Answers, I will tag him so that he's aware of it. But he really nailed what, what I was thinking as well, and he, I guess he has a bunch of points on the call that stood out to him. But demand for NVIDIA is so great, it's hard to get GPUs. Now, NVIDIA goes down on this, which is kind of funny. So it requires Tesla to put a lot more effort into Dojo, and are doubling down on Dojo, and they see a path for it being competitive, okay? There is no way in the world that this is going to be competitive with NVIDIA's chip. There, there is literally no way. And actually even suggesting that is just laughable. You may have a problem. You might have no choice as demand for NVIDIA is so high that they can raise prices, whoever the market will bear. Why NVIDIA would drop on that is beyond me, but I'll take it and I'll take the sell-off if it happens tomorrow with NVIDIA. That's why I'm saying it's really important to go through this call tonight because there's a lot of data here. We really have to make Dojo work. I can see his necessity to get this to work. And maybe he's trying to put a little hyperbole or spin on it. Like, don't worry, even if we can't get these, Dojo will be competitive. And let's give him the benefit of doubt. And that's why he's saying that. But for NVIDIA to drop on this or for you to suggest that this is going to be competitive, it's just not reality. So when you're making statements like that, if you're lowering guidance and after a couple things don't work, you're starting to lose credibility and you're starting to lose the crowd. And you can see right there that he's doubling down again. This is unusual whales, which you guys all know, I'm sure. And he's doubling down on it to see a path to be competitive. There's just, there's literally no way. I don't even know where he would think that he's going to go and make enough of these to even one be competitive, considering what's going on and how long and how many years it literally takes to even get up to speed and have one of these fabs. Another thing that people do not want to see, this is the transcript. They do a really good job. I, I follow them. They do a really good job of breaking out conference calls. So if you're ever wondering on a conference call, I have no affiliation with them, but if you're ever wondering on a conference call, like, hey, what's the pertinent stuff? They are extremely objective and they just get to the point. We are currently paused in Mexico. I think we would need to see where everything stands after the election. Tr Trump has said it would be Harry tariffs on Mexico. So it does make sense a lot in Mexico, blah, 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 blah. You're paused on a plant. Okay, I'll say it again. You're paused on a plant and you're saying it's because of tariffs. Are, are your cars made anywhere else overseas? Are they made in, let's say, someplace like China or Germany? Are those plants paused? So again, we're, we're having a credibility issue here. Okay, none of those cars that are made over there happen to make their way back over to here. This is a credibility issue once again. And what people are starting to weigh on him is over and over again, you're promising things and you're not delivering. And this is becoming a, a much larger issue. It's fine when you have the Cybertruck and you have a couple things that you're saying you're doing and we're still waiting for self-driving cars. But at the end of the day, I understand this stuff takes longer, but you can't keep promising 12 to 18 months and then it's 12 to 18 years. Now, before we go further, we're just going to review the facts. Yep. The facts are 52 cents versus 61. Sales were up, but, but to get sales up, you had to go out there and cut margins. And that's not good at all. And now they're talking about sufficient cash flow. Look at your free cash flow. And this is really why the stock is dropping. 1.3 versus 1.9 expected. And again, this is really the issue. So this is Tesla and this is from Barron's and I cut this out. I wanted to do this later because I wanted to get the full data out there as much as possible. So you're, again, you're always welcome to comment on how this is done and I will tag people that this is from. But Chief Futurist asking for a trend to discuss implications of earnings. Earnings miss. That's not the real story. The real story lies in the company's potential to deliver robo-taxi ambitions. He suggests if Tesla succeeds, the Vesture will likely gross, increase gross margins and delivery numbers. Sure, that would definitely happen. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of ifs that could happen, right? We could if all over ourselves. Winston called robo-taxis an inevitability, okay. Driven by rapid advancements in artificial intelligence, he cites massive data center and its current fleet of vehicles and key advantages leading them to believe they're gonna be able to deliver autonomous driving. We've heard this before. I don't know why he did not focus on the data center tonight and the, and the energy that, he, that he's producing. It's his fastest growing segment and he did not focus on it at all. And it's his highest gross margin segment and they crushed it last quarter. And I have no idea. If you go and look at the numbers when the delivery numbers, I have no idea why he didn't talk about this. He crushed it. Regarding the financial impact, Robo Taxi Pilot could emerge in 2024. Okay, we got five months left. And early 25, he predicts this would transform Tesla's business model, one time sales recurring revenue, business transformation, the likes of which the world has never seen. Okay. 
Did I mention I'm short? Now, Tesla's profit falls for second straight. Musk is trying to navigate cooling demand for EVs while also spending heavily to advance Tesla's AI ambitions. Now, despite all the cuts, you still lost 7% over a year, despite all those cuts and how many times they, they made cuts. Overall, focus remains a company-wide cost redu reduction. The announcement came on technology billionaire has been pushing to cut costs on Tesla facing weakening demand for its cars. Profits dropped by nearly half in three months, and these are the numbers that we just went over. And then we have this. Musk says Tesla to use humanoid robots by next year. So again, we have humanoid robots, we have a robo-taxi, and we have a chip that is going to rival uh, NVIDIA's chip, and all of, all of this, considering the robo-taxi, is supposed to start in about five months. So what happens here is that you can only cry wolf so many times, and you can only do this stuff so many times, and then you're going to hit a point with it where people are going to say that's enough. And that's exactly what you're starting to see tonight. People are just saying that's enough. Now, for me, as somebody that's short coming into this, you're going to have to watch this tomorrow, but it was really important for me to get this out there because people look at this and go, is it going to bounce? Is it not going to bounce? You never really know this. You don't really know what's going to happen. But I can tell you, no investment bank is going to look at that quarter tomorrow, mark my words, and raise guidance. No one's going to raise earnings. No one's going to raise guidance. And the number one factor is because of the cut to net income. It's really that simple. Now, if you look at that level that I drew for you and I'm sharing with you, you're holding in there. So you're holding that major DTL, okay? And it doesn't mean that it's a zero. Let's be really clear about this, guys. It just means that over-promising, under-delivering, and people are over it. You have that level right there, you're on that neckline, and then you're also on this DTL. This is a place of interest. So if it can hold here, and if it can rally, then that might be a place that you might wanna look at this for tomorrow. Again, I wanted to do something very specific for Tesla because this really stuck out as something that could just be absolutely huge. After hours, obviously, you have NVIDIA coming down because of the threat of Dojo. I guess I'm trying not to laugh when I say that, but I'm, I'm laughing on the inside. But again, did this present an opportunity? Maybe. You have some other issues out there right now that, that I think are pertinent. So you're seeing Google drop after hours. And really, that was just based upon what happened, I think, with them talking about their spending and the fact that I don't think that they're, I'm going to just go out there and put the tinfoil hat on. I don't think that their CFO is happy with their spending and what they're doing. Again, for time's sake, I'm just going to take this from the transcript and I'll tag them. But Ruth just did them dirty. So this is my 56th and last earnings call, 37 of them at Alphabet, Google's mission of advancing technology, bringing information. So she's out. And when this, when this happens, it's never really good. We saw what happened with CMG on this call and what happened there. And again, you have this out already. People know this, right? They already are aware of it. They already had a replacement. So is this a big deal? Yes and no. It's not a big deal because you knew it. But when you start to see a change, which is what you saw in the earnings, where you're spending and you're not seeing the growth based upon the spending, and let's talk about this. Look at how we fell down. Everyone starts reading the tape and then they start showing the books. And as they start showing the books, Look what starts happening. And then people start connecting. Is this why she's leaving? Whether you believe that or not, I, I truly, truly would suggest that you want, listen to more conference calls. The amount of money that you can make after hours by listening to conference calls and understanding earnings is staggering. And it's one of those things where I always try to explain to people with the stool. That's why there's the macro leg, the fundamental leg, and the technical leg. And again, for those that don't know, this is how I view the world now for trading. But... Econ's going to tell us, you know, really the what, what's going on, who's affected by what's going on, you know, the ec economic, CPI, PPI, demand, supply. That, those fundamentals are going to determine the technicals. So the technicals tell us when, but the fundamentals tell us who. And after hours, when you're listening to this and they're like, oh, that's why she's leaving. And then there were some things in here where their spending is going to increase. It's not, it's not great. It really isn't. And then we saw the stock start to drop. Disclosure, I am short Google at the time of this recording and probably will be into the evening. So where does that put us with some of these names? Well, Google was not great at all. I think it was okay. I don't know how it acts tomorrow and I don't know if they rally around her or not. What I, what I would say is this. I would watch the 55 really closely tomorrow on Google. And I think going over the conference this way and what we're doing this evening is way more important than just going over the indexes. Now, let's just look for some silver linings because we did have a couple. So ENPH actually missed, but the guidance was not as bad as expected. And if you look after hours, this is what you're getting. 
and you're getting this kind of nonsense. You might want to watch this one tomorrow. You have an enormous short interest in this name. I believe it's 11% of the float right now short. You probably don't want to be short the gap up where you could get up to that 55 and get to that 114, 115. Disclosure, I am long ENPH right here. And Texas Instruments as well. So Texas Instruments came down, and I thought this was a really very simple trade. We actually did this trade and walked through this trade pre-market on the public and walk through it because you came down because of the analog NXPI. NXPI missed and guided lower. And so what they did was they extrapolated that out to ADI, they extrapolated that out to TXN, and those names came down pretty hard. Now, that gave you a pretty nice opportunity to buy the 205 calls, which we actually did buy them, and we have people that are trading it after hours as well. But how does this work tomorrow? I, I think that you at least see that 205 to a six level. I think you get back at least to where you closed previously because it's very clear that this was a pretty good quarter. And I, I think that I think it's okay. Now, what happens with NVIDIA and what happens with the rest of the market tomorrow? I think you're going to be on pins and needles because of this. And I think the larger issue is the point that we started talking about in Saturday's video. And I'll link Saturday's video at the end. But the larger picture that we have here that we have to contend with, we must contend with over this entire thing, is the fact that these companies have huge comps that they have to beat. And Google's coming out and their revenues are not reflective of their AI spending. Now the question becomes, does that hurt NVIDIA because it's not reflective? I would argue that Elon tonight was clearly the best cheerleader that they could ask for. I think they were the best, basically coming out and saying NVIDIA can't make enough chips and they can charge whatever they want. I mean, who doesn't want to buy a company that can do that? That's it. 